Welcome back to a new series of recons for the Zwift Racing League 2023-24. Hope you've had a great summer or winter, wherever you are. We're going to be covering quite a bit in this first video. First of all, we're going to take a general overview of all the stages in round one of this current or new season, should I say. We're going to take a quick look and overview of Pack Dynamics 4.1 and what that might mean for your racing and then of course we're going to get straight into the recon for the Scotland stage which is on the rolling Highlands course a stage we have done before but let's get straight in to this week's recon okay so let's take a very quick look at the details from round one starting on Tuesday the 12th of September running straight through then until the final Tuesday of team time trial on the 24th of October. So round one is of course the opening scratch race around Scotland, which we will cover today. Round two, that's a points race around the epic Mercury 40. This includes five sprint segments. Race three, that's a team time trial. We're in France and it's over the testing rumor pool route, which starts off up that draggy reverse climb segment. And that could certainly test some teams early on. Race four, we're back to the second scratch race. This time, around the grippy, the punchy course in Yorkshire, which is the tour of Tui. Well, of course, race five, that's the second and final points race of this round, with all the segments this time being KQOM segments, so arguably one for the climbers there. And finally, as mentioned, we're in London for round six on the greatest London flat, a classic team time trial course, which of course is gonna test the team's skill and ability, and particularly when we're looking at Pack Dynamics 4.1. But before we talk about Pack Dynamics 4.1, I just want to ask if you're enjoying this content, if you want to stay in touch with all the recon videos we're doing this season, why not head down and subscribe to the channel? And while you're there, just leave a cheeky comment, maybe give the video a thumbs up as well. Engagement really helps the channel in this video out a ton and I really appreciate it. One more thing I want to talk about just before we get into Pat Dynamics and the recon is Level Velo Clothing, the supplier of advanced indoor specific clothing to many of the top cycling esports teams, including BL13 and Aber Synergy, of course, which have riders like Leonard Tugels. Level Velo not only have a fantastic range of indoor specific cycling shorts and jerseys, but we also produce custom jerseys and shorts and other clothing for your own cycling team or club. Head over to our custom clothing pages to see what it's all about. Now, let's get on and talk about Pat Dynamics 4.1 and how that is likely to affect your racing this season. I don't want to spend too long on this, but I just want to highlight a few points briefly, which you should be aware of if you've not raced using 4.1 at this point. A bold statement here, but firstly, racing is going to be better. It's going to be more fun. It's going to be more engaging with these new pack dynamics. And I really see this as a great step forward into the dynamic racing that we all want to see on Zwift. Why? Well, the energy saving and draft benefit is still there and strongly noticeable and measurable when sat in the draft. However, the shape of the cone is different. And if you're not in the right position behind the wheel, you can quickly drop out of the draft. So as steering is not enabled in DRL, you do need to concentrate more in order to maintain your position in the draft and avoid riders pushing you out. Having said that, another aspect which has changed is the power needed to move beyond riders in front. I have seen from both racing PD 4.1 myself and watching others that you do need to push more watts in order to move up the pack or pass riders. So again, in crucial segments or certain routes, managing and holding your position is crucial in order to avoid being in the wrong side of a split if that happens. Having said that, in some ways, the new Pack Dynamics 4.1 makes it easier to hold your position in the group at the same time. The big change is the reduction of churn on the front of the pack, which means pack speed should be lower and therefore the chances of breakaways for individuals and some small groups absolutely more likely with these new dynamics, which hopefully works well given the scratch races we've got coming up so far this season. So having said that, let's get straight in and look at this rolling Highland course in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's take a look at the power-ups available for this one. First of all, we've got the feather, which is gonna be super useful on three particular sections on this course. Mainly two of them, you've got the breakaway brake, of course, 
the bits of feather will be useful there, particularly on the finish line, because that's where the finish is going to be. You've got the castle corkscrew sort of climb, not an official segment there, but it comes just before the breakaway break. And that is also a great position there if you want to think about pushing the pace and reducing that pack size. And again, you can roll straight through and continue to apply the pressure when you've got the breakaway break. We've also sort of got this long, draggy segment here on the opposite side of the lock there, which we take in reverse once we start the lap proper. Again, about a kilometre and a half. It's more draggy than really pitching up, but again, could be useful. Second power up this time round is the burrito. Again, this could be useful either for solo or team tactics there if you're looking to reduce that pack size or even make a breakaway on this course. It's going to be really interesting, I think, particularly in those lower categories, we're going to see plenty of opportunities to break away in smaller groups coming into that finish line. I don't think it would necessarily be the same with the A races this time around, but there are opportunities combined with those power-ups and these new pack dynamics to absolutely reduce the size of that front group and contest those major points within the finish line. All right, so let's get in the pen and take a look at this course. As you're watching this footage, this is Pat Dynamics 4.1, so just pay attention to how the riders are moving around or not moving around so much in the draft. And again, the power required just to sit on those wheels if required, but also the positioning as I'm watching for moves and I don't wanna be too far back in that pack should any moves go later on in the ride. Okay, so we're in the pens. We're going to leave the pens here and it's a fairly rolling start here for about four and a half kilometers and it's actually at kilometer 4.5 when we reach the foot of the first time of asking on the breakaway break. So again, the breakaway break is just one of those segments where you've got to watch out for those riders pushing on there, just trying to reduce that pack size. So if you want to be in contention in that front group, just be wary, watch for any splits in this group. This first breakaway break goes from, from kilometer 4.5 to 5.1 as you roll through the banner. That's the start of lap one and the course proper. So once you've gone over the top there, the breakaway break, you're just going to drop down the other side and then you're going to take a left over this little intersection that takes you back over to the opposite side of the lot there. And then we're going to start to head towards this draggy road that takes us down to the other end of the lock. And again, this is quite draggy in places, so just watch out for teams and riders and groups moving off the front. The first time of asking where it really just pitches up a little bit here is from around about kilometre 9 to 9.5, rolling through for about a kilometre. And then again, it starts to flatten off as we head through that banner there. So again, you will roll through this banner at kilometer 10.7, of course, you pick a power up. Again, pretty rolling, not completely flat, but nothing too testing until we get to this, the Castle Corkscrew Climb. This is gonna come at kilometer 12.2. This is a point that I would be looking for the team to push on and break down that pack size if we've still got one big group on the front there. It really does pitch up. Timing as you go into the bottom of this climb and just pressing on those pedals a little bit harder is absolutely crucial if you wanna maintain or push your position up through this climb. We're gonna corkscrew round the top. It does drop down then a little bit, but keep the pressure on the pedals if you're starting to see the group lined out on that road because very shortly, you're gonna to come to the second time of asking of the breakaway break. So again, we're back to this KQOM. Remember, no points available, but it is an opportunity again to keep the pressure on that group. The breakaway break this time is gonna come at kilometer 13.6, and this finishes at 14.2, the first time of asking, and that's when you will complete lap one of three. So two more laps to go again, dropping down, taking the left across the lock, that draggy climb, back round to the castle con, and then we do it all again. Let's take a look now at the breakaway break finish line on that final and third lap. So as you pass that red marker on the floor there, that's 600 meters to go in this race. And once you've taken that right hand turn, it then starts to move around to the left. And it's really not until that final kick as you go left at the top there before again, you start to switch back right, that it really pitches up to about 7%. And that's the mark of about 300 meters to go. So if you've sat in the wheels and managed to hold on to those first couple of riders at this point, this is the point to go there and really start to apply the pressure with less than 15 to 20 seconds to go in the race. 
As you can see, just as we start to approach the top with 100 meters to go, the road does flatten off again. So if you've got a rider on your wheel, you need to keep that pressure on all the way to the finish line. So that's it, that's the course. I am gonna let the whole course play through once again so you can have a look at maybe the pack dynamics and riders moving around and those key points on the course. As I've said, all the recon notes are available over on the community pages at levelvelo.cc. Don't forget to go and ride one of the recon rides that take place. My pick would be the BL13 one. I think that's happening on the Saturdays there. Really cool team, know the stuff know the courses, know the tactics really well, and I've no doubt there'll be some useful insights coming out of that recon, but there are plenty of recons to choose from. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share these videos, and I'll see you next week for another recon.